everyone. Uh, all right, uh, so we had some issues. I've been e emailing you a bunch about uh, difficulties with the Marks videos, uh, which were removed by YouTube, and um, then the Dropbox issues. Uh, the Dropbox issues have been resolved. Um, now a proud subscriber to Dropbox Business Plus or whatever it is, and uh, you should have access to those back again. I'm also going to try and download those and, and uh, get them up on YouTube. Um, but so today we are moving uh, out of the um, 19th century, away from Marx and Nietzsche, uh, and into the 20th century, back into the 20th century, I suppose, uh, given our brief, or our discussion of Hannah Arendt. Um, and today we're talking about the uh, Lithuanian uh, philosopher, Emmanuel Levinas, uh, born in Lithuania, uh, but is generally thought of as a French philosopher. He was France was his adopted homeland. He felt very strongly about France, um, and uh, he wrote primarily in French. Uh, so Emmanuel Levinas, his dates are 1906 to 1995, uh, so spanning the entirety of the 20th century. Uh, and Levinas lived a, um, an interesting and uh, eventful life. Uh, Levinas was Jewish. Uh, Judaism plays a large role in his philosophy, um, uh, and he he has uh, some Talmudic writings also on uh, the Torah. So uh, Levinas is um, a a unusual uh, and rare uh, kind of religious philosopher or, or philosopher who uh, has a modern perspective on um, religion uh, and, and what religiosity um, means. We remember from Hannah Arendt's uh, tradition and the modern age, one of her big questions is how do we continue um, after uh, a tradition has ended? Uh, and we're going to see a lot of Arendt's um, analysis of the 20th century reflected in Levinas. Uh, and Arendt and Levinas, uh, both um, Jewish thinkers who were profoundly affected by World War II and the Nazis. Um, so we'll see a lot of Arendt's analysis reflected uh, in, in Levinas. Uh, and I think that Levinas is a thinker who provides an answer to Arendt's question about um, what we do uh, in the void that follows the end of a tradition, um, or uh, what can be flagged as a tradition in one way or another. Um, Levinas is thinking the, uh, the religious, he's thinking uh, the ethical, he's thinking the political, uh, and he's thinking metaphysics in entirely new terms. Um, those, well, that's, I'll, I'll say about that. He, he's not um, the first 20th century philosopher to, uh, to rethink all of those major philosophical categories and put them in new terms and give them new contexts and uh, flavors, um, and Levinas uh, very much follows from uh, Martin Heidegger, um, Martin Heidegger, German uh, philosophy, uh, philosopher. Uh, Levinas introduced France to uh, Martin Heidegger, and um, there's a very strong case to be made. I mean, I think it's a fact that uh, without Levinas introducing Heidegger to French intellectuals, there would never have been uh, existentialism, um, 
that most famous uh, 20th century school of philosophy, which is really barely a, a school of philosophy at all, um, is born out of um, Levinas's uh, translations of uh, Edmund Husserl and Martin Heidegger. Uh, so Levinas is just a, an incredibly pivotal figure in French philosophy and philosophy, 20th century philosophy. Uh, but he's unique in that he is um, a thinker of religiosity and uh, um, the divine, uh, and above all, a thinker of ethics uh, in a way that um, departs from the quote-unquote tradition. Right? So uh, in, in that sense, he's responding to um, Arendt uh, and their question of tradition. Uh, so. Levinas spent um, some time, I think two years, uh, over a year certainly, um, in a, uh, a prison camp uh, during World War II as a um, prisoner of the Nazis. Uh, obviously, um, as a Jew, he was uh, you know, threatened by the Holocaust and lost um, large amount of family in the Holocaust. Uh, and so Levinas's thought is um, in large part a response to the Holocaust and an attempt to break away from uh, the Western tradition, quote unquote, uh, particularly to break away from the thought of uh, Immanuel Kant uh, and uh, the, the modernists or, or the thinkers of modernity, um, Rene Descartes uh, and many others, um, but, but above all, uh, Kant's conception of ethics, uh, Kant's understanding of universality, and Kant's metaphysics are uh, what Levinas um, wants to break away from, to overcome, to conceive uh, otherwise, as he might say. Uh, so Levinas is known um, most sort of famously to the extent that he's uh, well known at all. He is a philosopher of the quote unquote other, uh, capital O, other. Uh, and so I just said. Um, Levinas is trying to break away from Kant or think Kant uh, otherwise, think Kant in a different way, um, reframe Kantian ethics in an entirely different way. Uh, and Levinas uh, believes that uh, we, we remember um, in our lectures about Kant that I made a point of mentioning uh, that Kant has, uh, in one sense, an other-oriented or other-directed ethics, an ethics that uh, forces you to respect the other as other, right? To never treat uh, another person as uh, a means to your own end, but as an end in yourself. Uh, and there's something in that that is other-directed. Uh, Levinas is going to, um, uh, to uh, radicalize Kant's other-oriented ethics and, um, and completely reframe my relation to another person, uh, taking that relation, the, uh, my relation to the other, outside the framework of Kant's um, universal, pure reason. Um, so, we, throughout our discussion in this series, in this lecture, will be um, making use of these terms, the other, uh, and we'll be talking about ethics um, in this uh, new way. Uh, a way that uh, exceeds the boundaries of Kantian universalism or the tradition of 
modern metaphysics. Uh, so the essay that we're looking at for today is uh, Reflections on the Philosophy of Hitlerism. And uh, it's a very early essay that Levinas wrote. Uh, it's written in 1934, uh, the year after Hitler comes to power in Germany. Uh, and what Levinas in broad strokes is trying to do in this essay, Reflections on the Philosophy of Hitlerism, is to show that uh, Nazi ideology is... Uh, not an accident of history. Uh, Nazi ideology is um, not uh, sort of an aberration uh, that um, you know befalls uh, the the modern state, uh, the liberal state, the democratic capitalist state, uh, but instead that. Uh, Nazism, uh, Hitlerism, as he calls it here, um, is uh, is an inherent uh, part of or an inherent possibility, uh, an inalienable possibility, and a constant possibility within uh, liberal democracy. Uh, and that, moreover, Nazism uh, and the philosophy, the ideology attached to Nazism is of a piece with, follows from, uh, and um, uh, belongs to, you could say, uh, the very same tradition from which we get liberal democracy. Uh, and I think in particular, he has Kant in mind here. Right? That, um, Kant is the, uh, is the um, sort of greatest thinker of, uh, of ethics in modernity uh, and of metaphysics in modernity um, and therefore if Nazism uh, is an inalienable possibility and even um, perhaps inevitable consequence of, uh, of modern liberal states democratic capitalist states, uh, then it is traceable back to, um, to Kant, right? Uh, and we've discussed this before in our lectures on Kant, right? There, uh, the scholar who I mentioned, uh, Robert Bernasconi, um, who wrote the, the article about uh, Kant as an unfamiliar source of racism, is a uh, primarily a scholar of Levinas, uh, and so it makes sense that he would be the one to uh, point out um, Kant's racism or to explore Kant's racism more. Right? And we remember from those lectures on Kant that Kant is, uh, according to Bernasconi, uh, sort of the architect of the uh, pseudo scientific idea of race to begin with. Uh, that Kant is the first to articulate uh, race as a scientific category. Um, and so I think Levinas uh, probably, uh, you know, not having done the research that um, Bernasconi did to make that connection explicit, is uh, sort of intuiting this shared source of liberal democracy and Nazi Nazism in Kant. Um, so we will pause here for a moment and uh, we'll come back to begin going through uh, the text, but that is the overall idea. <laughs> 